Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today on the DCC guy, I want to do some wiring. I know I said last week that it would probably be two weeks before we got to the point where we could start doing any wiring here on the modules. However, I pushed ahead, got all of the turnouts on the main line installed. The yard I haven't even started on yet, but we'll get to that in the future. But at least we can go ahead, install the DCC power bus, add some uh, feeders to the track, and I don't know that we'll be able to run any trains today, at least uh, under locomotive control, but we can do an 050 maneuver, and it runs pretty smooth through there, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click all. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. So what I want to start with, uh, with respect to wiring then, is how I add feeders uh, to the rails, to the truck, uh, to go down to the DCC power bus. And once we get all of the, the feeders installed here on this section of the layout. We'll go ahead, I'll flip this up on a uh, pair of sawhorses, and we'll go ahead and make the connections to the uh, DCC power bus. And for that, uh, as I have shown in previous videos on wiring, I use these scotch lock or suitcase connectors. And they allow you to make a quick solder-free connection that I think holds up time after time. I do have a video on how I do make connections under the layout using these Scotch Lock suitcase connectors, and I'll put a link to that right above me here in the video. So, you know, take a few minutes to take a look at how to do that kind of wiring under the layout. Okay, let's go ahead and start doing uh, some soldering of feeders to the track. Well, let's go ahead and, and take a look at how I go about doing this. Now, the great thing about the way that this is all soldered up and connected is uh, there aren't a lot of uh, feeders that need to be added. For this whole section of track here uh, that runs, you know, from four feet long, I only need six feeders. And that's because many of these connections run a long distance. So like this track here. This track here is continuous from here all the way through and then on down uh, into the yard almost. And as a result, you know, I don't need to do, I only need to make one connection here. Because I typically, for DCC uh, with, you know, a code 75, um, I think something on the order of, a, of one dropper or one feeder every four feet is more than adequate. Now, uh, in, with larger track and the like and larger wires, you can probably get a, away with something like six to eight feet for every feeder. But you also have to remember that you have to have a feeder for every isolated piece of rail. So although the, this one runs for about almost three feet continuous, this one here is only about a little over a foot long. And that has to have its own feeder because of these gaps here at the frog. So what we need to do then is go ahead and all you, uh, in, in, and to figure this out, all you need to do is just follow the line of the track and all the way until you run into a break. So on this one, you can come all the way, and then there's a break here at the frog. This one here, there it starts out here, and it comes in, and then there is a break here at the frog. On this one, there's a break at the frog here, and this runs for, this one is continuous all the way to the boundary. So this is over three feet long here. And so it only needs one feeder somewhere towards the middle of that piece of track, and so on for all the rest of these. So it just varies. But the thing to remember is with, with rail, um, it has a certain amount of resistance, and the bigger the rail, the less resistance there is. So you can get out, you know, with code 83 and code 100, and you need a dropper or a feeder to the rail about every six to eight feet. When you get down into code 75, code 70, and even smaller, then the, the uh, feeders to the rails need to be closer and closer together. Because, you know, although 
uh, nickel silver rail is a pretty good uh, conductor. It's not anywhere near as good as copper would be or brass or anything like that. Uh, the good thing is it looks prototypical. Brass doesn't. Uh, but at any rate, let, let's go ahead and take a look at how we add these feeders. One of the best places to add a feeder is at a rail connector. And the reason for that is you've already got a gap in the plastic here. Okay, And what I like to do is I like to solder my feeders to the bottom of the rail so they can't be seen. Now, it is possible to, uh, to solder them to the side of the webbing of the rail. And if you get that done just right and use, you know, say about a size 22 solid wire, you can probably get it in there to where it's not very uh, visible, particularly if it's on the back side of the track. That's not an issue. But it's on the facing side of the track where people can see it that you want to be able to reduce the uh, profile. So I like to put them on the bottom. Some people actually go to the uh, measure of uh, making their uh, connections to the rails before they lay the track on the layout. If you don't have a spot where um, there is a, uh, a gap in the uh, plastic uh, connecting of the ties, you can just take an X-Acto knife and run it up under here like this, okay, and like this, run it up under, and cut through that piece of plastic, and then you can usually just poke it out of here. I'm going to be using two colors, red and black, and I'm going to use black for the aisle sides, and uh, on the other side, I'm going to use the red. Now, why am I using red on the back? Well, red is to the rear. So you can always remember red is on the rear. So this is the front side towards the front of the layout. This is towards the rear of the layout, thus R. Okay, so let's begin with a piece of the black wire. And for this, I'm using, uh, get this in here, I'm using a 20 gauge uh, solid wire. And I'm using solid because it's easier to fish it down through holes in the layout and also to give it a nice bend and solder it underneath here. Okay, I'm going to use um, a 1 8 inch drill bit to drill this hole. And it's just going to be a hole drilled right adjacent to the track here. I'm going to push some wire down through there to make sure the hole is cleared out. There we go. And I'm going to duck under the layout here and measure out the length of the wire under that so it will reach to the DCC bus. Okay, so I did that. Now I'm going to make a cut right here, put that out of the way, and get my uh, wire strippers, and we're going to strip off part of that rail, or part of that wire, okay? Now, at this point, since I don't want to, you know, uh, solder a blunt end like this to the underside of the rail, that would be uh, a, not a very good joint. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bend it over and make a little 90 degree bend there so that the end of that wire will be flush up against the rail, the bottom of the rail itself. Let me get that a little bit better. I think I can tighten that up a bit. Yeah, there we go. And I like that a little bit better there. Now, let's go ahead and we'll hit it with some solder because I want to get it pre-tinned. Get a bit up on top of there. Now what I want to do is get this into position and push it back up under here to the rails. And also I'm going to use my little um, heat sinks. And I talked about these in my uh, videos that I previously did on soldering. So I'll try to uh, add a link either here or at the end of the video uh, to the one on soldering that I did. Okay, so we want to try and get a good solid 
connection up under here. Okay. Now I'm going to hold that while it is uh, cooling off and see what kind of a joint we got. Okay, that's a good solder joint. I'm pulling on that and it's not cut, cutting loose on me. So that's what we want. We want a good tight, a reliable solder joint like that one. Okay, now I go ahead afterwards and just give a nice finish to the top of the rail there. Just in case I got some solder there, but I don't see any. And it's a nice smooth finish there. Good. Okay, now uh, I'm going to do a red one and for that I'm going to have to move a little bit to my, to your right and set this up again. Okay, so this one I'm going to do right here because the length of the rail is about a foot. So this is about midpoint on it. And as you can see, I've got uh, my uh, webbing uh, cleared out of the plastic between the two ties. So I've got a good spot right in here where I can solder to. So let me go ahead and since this one's towards the rear of the layout, so I'm going to be using a red wire and let's go ahead and drill our hole. Okay. I'll vacuum that up later. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to feed the piece of wire down through here. And I'll duck under the layout again and make sure it's long enough. Okay, what I do underneath here is I just wrap the end of the wire about an inch or so around the DCC power bus so that uh, it's not going to come loose when I pull on it a bit. Okay, we'll make a cut there. Get that out of the way. Whoops. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to strip some off. Some insulation. Okay, got that. And let's see. Whoops. That time it went all the way through. Okay, so let's give it a little tweak again, like so, there. I'm going to put a clip on this just so it won't disappear down the rabbit hole again. And go ahead and pretend the end of it. There. Okay, now let me apply the heat sinks. Nice. Okay, there they are. Now let's get this in place and do some soldering. Let's see if that's going to hold. Okay, it's a good tight fit. It's not popping off of there. So that's all there is to it, to adding feeders to your track. Okay, so at this point, what I want to do is, uh, I think that's, that's all of the feeders that we need for now. Let me go ahead and turn the layout up on its side so that we can see the underside and I'll show you the power bus and uh, we'll go ahead and make the connections between these feeders and the power bus itself. Before I tip the layout up and uh, allow you to see what's going on underneath here and uh, show you the power bus, the DC, DCC power bus and how I do my uh, how I do my connections to it. Let me go ahead and show you what I use for the actual um, connections here between different sections because I'm, uh, you know, we've got two different modules here and so there needs to be a connector to go uh, in the various electrical bus lines uh, when we go from one module to the, to the next one. And so what I use are, are, are called these Anderson power poles and these are a great design uh, they are a very low resistance uh, component or device. 
so you don't get very much uh, voltage drop uh, passing through here. And that was a real problem with the old Cinch Jones plugs that uh, were used on a lot of NMRA type modules for connections. Um, so what I want to do is show you how to make up one of these connectors because I use these uh, on each end of the DCC power bus and I use red and black for the power bus to match the red and black here on the connectors. And you can only uh, connect these in one way. They will not connect this way. So you always get the polarity correct. And once they are made up, they click as you put them together and form a nice positive connection there. So let me go ahead and show you how to make these up because it's a fairly easy operation. And let me point out, I get these from a company called PowerWorks, P-O-W-E-R-W-E-R-X.com. And the stock number of this is PP30-25. Okay, so that's a set of 25 uh, connectors and 30 is the size designation. Now, for the DCC power bus, I'm going to be using a 16 gauge wire instead of the 14 gauge that I normally use on the Piedmont Southern. The reason for that is, um, you know, it's a small, short layout. You don't have to worry about uh, a lot of, of, of losses due to resistance because, you know, it's what, 10 foot of run and that's it. And therefore, you know, it's easy enough to use a 16 gauge stranded wire uh, to, for the DCC power bus. You don't need 14 gauge or 12 gauge. About the only time I might suggest that is if you were going to potentially use the module as part of a larger layout at some time in the future, then you might want to consider going ahead and using a larger power bus. Or, but that's up to you. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do, uh, I've got my soldering iron warmed up here, and I've already stripped back a little bit of uh, the insulation on the wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tin the ends of the wires. And that's going to make it very simple to do this installation. Okay, there's the red one. And the, we'll do the black one now. Okay. Now, these are the contacts that go on the end of each wire, and they will then go inside of this uh, plastic device here, the connector itself. So I'm going to slide these guys in here, right over there. And, you know, if you want and you have the, uh, the appropriate type of, con of uh, com crimper, you can just crimp these connections. You don't have to solder them. I do prefer to go ahead and, and do soldering because I think it makes a much better bond and a much, you know, more permanent connection. Plus, I don't have to buy the right crimper. Now, try not to get solder on the outside of this connector because it has to fit inside of this plastic uh, device and if you get too much slop on the outside, you're not going to be able to make that connection. So I'm just holding the solder right here at the tip and letting it flow back up inside that connector. And it's melting the solder that was already in there and making a nice bond. So that's all there is to that with the soldering. Let me get that out of the way. Okay, now, once you have those made up, then it's a simple matter to insert these in here. And you can see I put red into red and notice the way I have it oriented. And we're just going to push it in until you hear that click. Okay, now let's hear the black one. Listen for the click. There. Okay, they're both in there, they're both good and tight. So that's all it is. And then once you've got that made up, you can insert these into each other. Hear that nice click? That is a good firm connection. And you can disconnect them and you're ready to go. So let's take a look under the layout at the rest of the story. Okay, here we are under the layout. As you can see, 
I've got it tipped up on its side. I'm not standing on my head shooting upside down here. And what I wanted to show you first is the DCC power bus. And as I showed you a few minutes ago on how to uh, make one of these, uh, the red and the black wires. Now I've got them twisted, uh, the recommendation from NCE, and I'm going to be using the NCE power cab here, is to uh, twist your main power bus, DCC power bus, approximately three t turns per foot. And so I've got a few extras in here, but I'm expecting it to uh, unwind a bit as it sits over time. And as you can see, here's my uh, the connector that I showed you how to make. You know, you have to have a pair of these, one for each end of your power bus, in order to make uh, connections between modules. So that's pretty straightforward on there. And you know, these are a great way, f you know, for doing this time of con this type of connection on any uh, model railroad where you have to uh, uh, use a, uh, a a power bus and make connections uh, along the way. Uh, you can just use this type of an approach. And it allows you to disconnect uh, when you need to do maintenance work or do troubleshooting on various portions of the layout. So what I want to do now is uh, add the connections to the red and the black uh, feeders that we just uh, installed on the top side of the layout. And for doing that, I'm going to be using these 3M number 905 uh, Scotch Lock uh, suitcase connectors. And I did a video on uh, suitcase connectors and wiring and, and the whole nine yards. And I'll try to remember to put a link to this uh, uh, above me here or at the end of the video. And these are a fairly reliable method for uh, doing wiring. And I've been using these for over 20 years. But you have to get the right size uh, connector for the right size of wire. And if you look on here, and, and they, they spell this out uh, where you purchase these. But at any rate, the way these work is they have a slot for the running wire, which is, you know, going to be one of our power bus wires. And they also have a little slot for the feeder. And the running wires are on this particular type of connector, the 905, is a 18 to 14 gauge. So with a 16 gauge wire, we're right smack in the middle. And then they say for the, uh, for the tap or the, uh, the feeder that we're going to be using, uh, it's properly sized for 22 to 18. And since I'm using a size 20 feeder, we're again right smack in the middle of the range for this. So it should be a perfect fit. So let's get started. So basically, pop the connector over the running wire like that. And then find the hole for your feeder, put it in like so. And holding both, take your pliers. and crimp. Okay, and then close the lid. And let me show you a close-up of this if I can. There's a little metal uh, device here that slides into a slot in the red plastic. And when you push down on that, it's got two little slits here. And one slit uh, goes ahead and uh, cuts into the wire, the insulation on one on the uh, large wire, and then the other cuts into the insulation on your feeder. So these are called an insulation displacement connector, an IDC, because they cut into the insulation on the outside of the wire and displace it, and then they bite into the wire itself. So that makes the physical electrical connection there. So it's a very straightforward, easy way to make a solderless connection, and it's super reliable. Now I think these are rated at something like around 30, 32 volts DC. So they're perfect uh, for our, our layout lay, our wiring. Let's go ahead and we'll do a couple of more if I can get them in the f image here. Okay. Let me turn the camera a little bit to the side. Okay. Now I can get all of it in, I think. So let's go ahead and do the black one here. Okay. So I'm going to pop it into the, uh, I'm going to do it that way since it's facing that way. Okay. So there it's into the channel. And then we pop this guy into this channel. 
for it okay. and hold it so nothing slips out. And then you need a good square crimp. And then close the lid and that's it. So that's all there is to doing one of these connectors. Let me do this last red one here and I'll have that done. Okay, so I've got both wires in their slots and give it a good square crimp. That's all it takes. Okay, we just made four solderless joints in the matter of a, a couple of minutes. It takes longer to explain it to you on the video than it actually takes to do it in real life, to be honest with you. Uh, you can see we've got more uh, things to be connected. These are the green wires uh, to go to our frogs once we install the, uh, the blue point turnout controllers. And of course, I've added a, a yellow and a blue wire here uh, to the uh, wires that go to the electromagnets. And we'll be uh, uh, adding those in later as well. So that's how you, uh, you do a uh, DCC power bus. But uh, this is the method that uh, NCE recommends with their DCC systems using the uh, twisted uh, pair of, of wire in order to reduce the chance of voltage spikes that can wipe out your decoders. Well, that's a wrap for today. Uh, I hope that gives you some ideas about how to go about installing your uh, DCC power bus under your layout and adding feeders using suitcase connectors like those I showed you uh, a few minutes ago. You know, it, it makes a very quick and easy job of uh, installing feeders on your layout. Unfortunately, there's no alternative to soldering feeders to the rails, at least ones that I know of, but at least, you know, you don't have to do all of the nasty uh, soldering, standing on your head and stuff like that, um, that used to be required for installing feeders uh, to a bus under the layout. Uh, with these suitcase connectors, it's so much quicker and easier. Okay, now as far as Monday, I think what we're going to do on Monday is go about installing these various um, blue point controllers for the turnouts that I've got installed here on the layout. So we'll go ahead and get those in. Uh, next Friday, what I want to do is, uh, assuming my order comes in from Walther's with everything that I've ordered, uh, we should be able to install the push rods on these uh, blue point controllers and um, see if they, we can run trains because. Once those are in, at least we can hold the points in position uh, and run a locomotive. And, you know, we've got feeders now, so all I need to do is connect power to the power bus and we're ready to go. So these are sort of the last step. After that, we'll have an exercise in wiring the uh, double pole, double throw switches that control frog polarity. And that'll be another exercise. So there's always something else to do uh, on the layout. Have a great weekend. Uh, stay safe. Uh, wear your mask, avoid the COVID virus, and we'll see you here on Monday. Bye now.